Hello all, shoestring here. Most of you know I've been doing videos on inexpensive equipment we use for solar. I did a review of a charge controller not too long ago, a cheap Chinese one like this, only it was blue and a little different. This one recently came out and said it was an upgraded version. Several folks have asked if I would do a review on it see if it works, how it functions, that type of thing. So I'll do the initial testing just to see if it functions, how the buttons work, where everything goes. Okay, so I got this one just yesterday, I believe. Let's look at some of the facts on it. Okay, it is, of course, made in China. Hopefully you can see it's clear enough. There it is. It's a 12 or 24 volt. This is 30 amps. Do not do more than 30 amps, please. And it will take in 50 volts. As you can see for the input, though, don't do more than 390 watts for 12 volts. Or 780 watts for a 24-volt system. All my systems are 12 volts, so that will be 390 watts. We're not going to do more than 390 watts with this little charge controller. So, it has the standard inputs for your for your solar panel, your battery, and your load. I don't normally use load, but we'll take a look. It says it can set the voltage. It has an MCU control, built-in timer, full protection. We'll take a look at that. Two USBs. Charge a cell phone, a tablet, that type of thing. We'll take a look, see if it actually does. Let's go ahead and put this thing to operation and see if it'll function. Now, I will be using today a uh, lead acid battery, a wet lead acid battery. It's uh, a Die Hard, right there, as you can see. 210 reserve capacity. That means about 105 amp hours. It's wet lead acid. So, which means you have to have water, distilled water. Make sure your water is good. Always important that your battery is in good shape before you use it. Another thing with this charge controller, it says only use it for wet lead acid, AGM, or gel. Do it, the instructions say do not use this for lithium or nickel or any type of other batteries. You want to make sure you have distilled water. And the water are, is up to level. And since we're talking about that, let's go ahead and do it. Put a knife right here. We'll pop it open. And the water levels are good. I'm going to have to clean this off, though. But that's what happens when you use batteries a lot. I have bought some inexpensive lithium batteries that I have used in a couple of videos, but um, mostly the bulk of everything I do is lead acid. See, plenty of water. Also need to clean off a bit. But it will be good enough for our testing today. <clears throat> Make sure you keep these down tight. And remember, when these are charging, they vent. So you don't want them in the house. You want them outside somewhere they'll be safe and not cause an explosion or anything. Okay, so the water level is good and we can go forward. So I'm also going to show you the instructions here. The uh, English version, of course. That way, all you have to do is pause this if you want to, and you can go through and take a look. I'll tell you a lot of what's necessary anyway, such as only use, right, wet lead acid, gel, AGM, Right, don't use it for nickel, lithium. Like I said, I'll just go through this quickly because you can pause it on your own and go through and read it. I'll go through what this is or I'll write in here as we do it. And then here's your technical specs. So you can program it yourself. Technical parameters. There you go. The other side, of course, is in Chinese and it won't do me any good. Some of you may know how to speak and read Mandarin. I don't know. Okay, there it is. Now, we'll get on to it. 
So the first thing we'll be connecting is the battery. As you can see, battery symbol right there, positive and negative. We'll be using, since it's not permanent, alligator clips. Okay. And positive, red and black, of course, is the negative. I'll go ahead and hook those up, and we'll get right back to you. Oh, by the way, the manual does say, and most people will tell you, always hook up the battery first. Because if you hook up the uh, panels first, you could burn out the charge controller. Just between us, I've been doing this for years, and I have never burned out a charge controller by doing the panels first. But it's always a good idea if you have instructions and a manual to follow them. Okay, so let me hook that up. We'll get right back to you. All right. The battery is now connected. Well, about to be. The connections are to the charge controller. Positive. Red. Negative. Some people, some places will call it neutral, but red and black, plus and minus. Let's go ahead and hook that up to the battery we have sitting over here. We'll go ahead and do the red first. All right. Then we'll go ahead and do the negative. As you can see, the batteries will show you what is positive right there and what is negative right there. And they are hooked up. Okay. I also, just between us, have not found any difference between hooking up the small connectors or the large M8s. It doesn't really make any difference. I've seen no difference in performance when I hook it up. So either one will do. Let's go check our charge controller. Okay, it is now activated. Okay, good. 12.8 is where this battery stands at right now. Let's go ahead and go through these connections here, right? Or these controls, I should say. Well, as you can see, the battery, here's the battery symbol, and it will show 12.8 volts. Okay, so we start pushing the button. 13.7 is what this is set at. That's the maximum charge you can do. Of course, it'll go back after a couple of seconds. 13.7. You can adjust that up and down if you want to. Most people for just lead acid will leave it alone. There is 12.6, which what it has to be at to do the load. Okay, 12.6. 10.7 is how low the battery voltage will get when the charge controller will stop running the load or anything else, and we'll just charge the battery. That's 10.7. And here's your 24-hour clock you can use for your load. This is the load symbol. I just turn it off because I don't use the load. And right there are what all the buttons do. This last one here is for different type of batteries. B1 is normally lead acid, and this one doesn't change, which I'm not surprised because B2s and B3s are different types of batteries, such as lithium or nickel, and this says it will only do lead acid. There's the controls. You can, like here, move it over and change the voltage up or down if you want to. I'm not actually going to because I don't want to change it, but up or down will work. And, of course, I now have the load off. Back on, off. But that just drains more power from the battery, because that's where it's getting it from. Okay, so that's a quick overview of what the controls look like, how you change them up or down, and what the load does. And a, and a brief explanation of each one does. Of course, I gave you a copy, well, a picture there of the instructions. Feel free to look at it and get in more detail if you want to. Next thing we're going to do is hook up the solar panels. Okay, solar panels are now hooked up, as you can see. Black here and red, positive and negative. And as you can also see, a solar panel has shown up on our little screen here, an arrow showing going to the battery. So it is now actually charging the battery. Solar panels are out there in my yard. They're only a 45 watt Harbor Freight, but, and it's cloudy out there, so we're not going to get a lot. But the point of this video is just to show you that it actually functions. When I do the big test, I'll show you 
that the USBs work if they do and how it actually all works together and how well it works. But at the moment, this was our initial opening it up and seeing if everything functions and how it works. Okay, I'll do an, I'm going to set this up on one of my batteries that need charging and we'll let it sit for a week or two. Then I'll do another video to show you how that one worked out. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments. If you like these videos, please go ahead and subscribe and shoestring out.